Today, TikTok made me corrupt my Hello Kitty merch. Everyone knows Hello Kitty. This silly little cat who's five apples tall and weighs about three apples. Do whatever you want with that information. I don't know too much about Hello Kitty, but over the years I've seen her plastered just about everywhere on just about everything. There's so much dedicated to Hello Kitty. I'm not just talking about products. There's also hotels, airlines, and even entire theme parks dedicated to her and other Sanrio characters. Obviously, I needed to get my hands on some Hello Kitty merch, so I set out on an adventure to my home turf. Oh, there they are. I see them. I picked out some Hello Kitty products. A whole mini shopping haul. But here's the problem. Hello Kitty is very cute. It gives me sparkle butt vibes and I can't stand it. So I decided to make her and her friends look a lot more cursed. TikTok made me want to corrupt my Hello Kitty merch into cursed freaks of nature. These are gonna be hands down the most cursed things I've ever made. Run. The first thing that piqued my curiosity was this Hello Kitty dancing figure. Moving animatronic type things already sounded kinda cursed to me, so I figured this was a good place to start. Plus, not gonna lie, I wanted to see her dance moves. I don't really care what you think of me respectfully- you guys are always appalled that I open my packages with a fork. I don't know what you guys are using to open your packages. I just think forks are a safer option than trying to use a sharp object. But maybe that's just me. I don't think this Hello Kitty is five apples tall. Clearly it's not made to scale. That's okay. I'm willing to overlook this. What I can't overlook is the fact that it's not working. I can't seem to turn it on. I figured it probably just isn't loaded up with batteries. So I pulled out my handy dandy screwdriver and got to work. Hello Kitty was giving me a hard time, but eventually I got her to open up. Turns out my suspicions were right. She's got nothing in her head. Luckily, I happen to have some batteries on hand, so crisis averted. Yet we have another problem on our hands. Hello Kitty is loud and obnoxious. <laughs> That's kind of a stupid thing. That is a stupid thing. That noise, oh my gosh. That's too bad. That is obnoxious. It barely moves. Even with all the noise and fanfare, she's barely moving at all. You can hardly call that a dance. For some reason, she gives off the same vibes as that girl from Squid Game. I've got my work cut out for me. I'm starting off by toning down the color on this. I wanted to black everything out and start fresh. I didn't gesso or sand it down or anything. I just used my multi-surface paint and hoped for the best. It's working great. <laughs> Gotta love the multi-surface paint. Saves you a few steps and a lot of heartache on those few occasions where it happens to work. <laughs> I'm trying to keep the darkness contained to mostly just her dress, but sometimes it seeps beyond that. Just can't help myself. She's already starting to look a little more edgy, and I like that. I was very thorough with my painting process, as usual. I did a couple coats of the blackest black paint I could find. I wanted everything to look nice and smooth and even. Her signature red bow had to go. She's probably not going to be recognizable as Hello Kitty after such a dramatic change, but that's okay. I'm renaming her. She's no longer Hello Kitty. Now, she's Wednesday Kitty. <laughs> That's right, I'm turning her into a Wednesday slash Hello Kitty hybrid abomination that your eyes will never be able to unsee. It's not easy painting in the lines. Hello Kitty has a lot of detail. Sometimes it gets a little messy when going over such intricacies. I tried acetoning some of the extra paint off. You can't really tell on camera, but it started melting her face off. <laughs> Luckily, I only used a little bit because I had a feeling this might happen. It's part of the process. I'm touching things up with some white paint. It's the only alternative I have left besides throwing this in the trash. But I'm not one to waste five bucks. I blended that in masterfully. Perfect. I tried touching up her buttons as well, but that process wasn't going as smoothly. I'm trying to make cursed Hello Kitty, not garbage Hello Kitty. I'm saving that one for next week. Looks pretty good. Looks like I could have bought her this way. What makes her cursed though is her face. Things are about to get rough. Hello Kitty was putting up some resistance. So much resistance that my Dremel tool kept losing charge. So be right back. I love when they put up a fight. There we go. It's like a hot knife cutting through butter. After that nose removal surgery, the cursed levels are already going through the roof. She no longer needs a nose. I'm replacing it with a mouth. She traded a nose for a mouth. It's one or the other. Can't have both. I also gave her some new and improved eyeballs. This is definitely my favorite part about her. There's just something so cursed about those eyes. I could leave her as is. She's looking perfect already, but it wouldn't truly be Wednesday without her pigtails. I fabricot glued on some strands of hair. Unfortunately, I didn't give her a full head of hair. I wanted to be able to access the batteries in the back if I needed to. Would be so disappointing if her batteries ran out and she couldn't dance anymore. 
Now Cursed Wednesday Hello Kitty can loudly and obnoxiously shimmy all day long. What a joy. She was feeling a little lonely though, so I decided to give her a pet. I picked up one of these mystery boxes from Five Below. There's a plush dangler inside. Oh my god! but you don't know which one you're gonna get. Luckily, my friend, the cashier at Five Below, who I run into all the time on my adventures, gave me some tips and tricks. Basically, you can just peek inside the box and see which one you're gonna get. So I already knew which plush dangler I'd be coming home with today. Sweet, sweet Melody. I don't know what relationship Hello Kitty and Melody have in the Sanrio universe. Maybe they're sisters, maybe they're friends, I have no idea. None of that matters because in my universe, Melody is gonna be cursed Hello Kitty's even more cursed pet bunny. Melody isn't supposed to be one Wednesday. That's only Hello Kitty if that makes any sense. I still wanted them to look like they were a family, and you know, when you're a family you always wear the same colors and similar clothes and whatnot. She has to look just as edgy as Hello Kitty, but that face is looking too cute and pinchable, so I glued some new skin over it. A blank slate for Melody. Second chance at not being a sparkle bun. She's looking more cursed than I ever intended, almost like something you'd see in a horror movie. I love that hair. It's a nice touch. I don't even know what I just made. It's almost too cursed. I think I'm gonna have to leave this one at my neighbor, the screaming toddler with space bunts door. I know she'll love it. Now that I've disposed of that freak, it's time to conquer my next cursed Hello Kitty adventure. I found this cool little set of Hello Kitty nesting dolls at Five Below. I thought they were too cute to pass up. These are actually meant to be painted on, so it came with its own little paint set. I can pretty much guarantee these paints are gonna be awful, so I'll set those aside for my neighbor as well. I don't usually paint anything super tiny, so there might be some challenges to overcome, especially as I move down the line. Good thing these are meant to be cursed. Setting the bar low today and every day. That's how I like it personally. <laughs> I started off by painting all the backgrounds first. I chose some very bright, bright, in-your-face colors for these. This kind of reminds me a lot of the older videos I used to do on the channel where I'd like draw and paint in my derpy, cartoony kind of style that I love. A blast from the past. Look at that. They're like beacons of neon trying to blind you, in sharp contrast to my poorly lit background. To do the detailing, I pulled out my Posca pens. I missed these guys. It's been a while since I've used them. This time, I'm not trying to make the characters resemble anyone other than themselves, but I am going all out with the cursed factor. Hello Kitty isn't who you think she is. I know the real her. She actually looks like a bald, middle-aged man with five o'clock shadow when she isn't all done up for the cameras. I know. You wouldn't believe it even if I told you. Pom Pom Purin stole Hello Kitty's missing nose. He also just so happens to be a nudist. That's a belly button, just so you know. <laughs> no judgment here. Melody take two. This time she's looking a little more put together, a little more respectable. <clears throat> As for Cinnamon Toast Crunch, there wasn't much I could do. Things are getting very, very tiny very fast. So instead I added a lot of chaos flying around. Cinnamon Toast Crunch tends to smell like toots, just like my cat Tootmeister. I like this one. It has like a doodle kind of vibe. Adds to the cursed factor. I think I get a point for this one. I tried doing something for this little paint smear. Unfortunately, there's not much I could do for Kuropi. To make up for it, I gave Kuropi some eyelashes. <laughs> all right, so here they all are together. I love making things that make me laugh. I've always loved cursed and derpy kind of vibes, so so this is right up my alley. It's kind of fun just sitting down and corrupting things. It's freeing in a way.